Hi, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how you can uh, make your Phoenix code run automatically and run or iterate over a different a specific solver, parameterize your problem, and automatically generate large data sets by repeating your solver in a loop. So in my opinion, there are three great things about Phoenix. One is that you can couple your different PDE solvers to build multi-physics models. Another advantage is that you can easily couple your PDE solver with any other code that you develop in Python, and that gives you flexibility to be innovative in developing finite element solvers such as multi-scale solvers. And number three is that you can easily uh, wrap a for loop around your code and parameterize your problem and automatically generate large data sets, which are useful, for example, for either parametric studies or for uh, generating data sets for machine learning problems. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to do something like that with uh, Darcy's uh, problem, Darcy's flows. So I'll show you how we can parameterize Darcy's flow problem and generate uh, large data sets, which we can for example, use in machine learning models. So, so in this problem, and uh, this is the code that's uh, shared in the GitHub directory, the description in the box below, and uh, we generate a simple square mesh here. So this is the domain. I set the mesh here, so 150 sets the resolution. I generate a linear function space, this line. And then uh, in this example, I want to also, I want to, uh, run automatically run different porous media solutions for different permeabilities. So here I'm defining the permeability files that I want to save. So I give the name and uh, by using uh, these uh, commands, I can basically easily rewrite uh, on one on a single X, uh, file, which in this case is going to be an H5 file, which is uh, supports high performance computing. I can, um, uh, uh, save my data. So in this setting, first I define my parameters A and B. So this is a specific range between a specific values. And in this case, I define how many of them I want. And uh, here specifically, I'm parameterizing the permeability. So at first for me, just to see my input data permeability, I uh, uh, generate a uh, permeability field that I like, and I save it. So here in this case, I'm using the expression command to uh, define my permeability and parameters A and B it could be varied. So you can see I'm changing A and B using these arrays that are defined here and looping uh, around them to generate different permeabilities. And then I project each permeability, which is defined as an analytical expression into my function space V, which contains my mesh. And then I save the file. Okay, so, and I, and I save them all in a single file using this command. So uh, then I move on to define my finite element problem. I have a square domain. I can define my inlets, outlets, and walls. Uh, in this case, I'm uh, defining my elements here. This is a vector element for velocity. And I have also a, um, a scalar uh, element space for my pressure. So I'm using second order uh, shape functions for velocity, first order for uh, pressure. So this gives me uh, a P2, P1 element. And then you can see in this case, we have mixed elements. We have a mixed function space and I can you know, def combine them into a function space W like this. And then I define my test functions, which are split between V, the test function corresponding to velocity and Q corresponding to pressure. And I have same thing for a trial function. Okay, then I can define my boundary conditions. For my traditional boundary conditions, I uh, on the walls, I define free slip. So here I'm telling it that the uh, Y component of velocity is zero. So that's no penetration condition. So uh, capital W uh, comes from um, my, um, basically it comes from my function space. And by using sub zero, this zero implies the first element, which is velocity. A and uh, one corresponds to the first component of velocity, which is the, the uh, uh, sorry, one component corresponds to the second component of velocity, it starts with zero and then goes to one. So one is a Y component of velocity. And then at the outlets, I have uh, 
W sub one, so one is a second uh, uh, member of my function space, so that's pressure. And I said pressure equals zero at outflow, and at the inlet, I said pressure equals to one. So I'm essentially driving the porous media flow by a pressure gradient. So then I can combine all these boundary conditions into BC because they're all my traditional boundary conditions. Then I move on to define my uh, weak form. So here's the weak form that I have. So the equation that I'm solving is Darcy equation. I have divergence free condition, and I also have velocity plus K permeability over mu uh, viscosity times gradient of pressure equals to zero. So if you write this in vectorial form, V plus grad P equals zero, and you, multi uh, and you multiply both sides by your test functions, you can derive the, the weak form as this. And you also have the divergence free condition, which you can add using the weight function, the uh, weight or test function for pressure, which is Q. And in the right hand side, I have a source term, which in this case is set to zero. Okay. Then uh, what I do is that I'm defining XDMF files that I want to save my output. This is basically, it essentially gets saved as an H5 file. And I define that for velocity and pressure. Then I define my linear variational problem. F1 is the left-hand side of my uh, weak form. F2 is the right-hand side. And I'm writing the solution to W SOL. And then I'm also defining my digital boundary conditions, which are the BCs that are here. And then I can define the linear solver that I want. In this case, I'm using an LU solver because this is a 2D problem, typically small problems and also small to medium sized problems. LU decomposition is a very reliable and accurate way to solve the linear system of equations. But if you have larger problems, which we'll talk about later, you'll probably want to use GMRS or biconjugate stamp. So typically for advection dominated large problems, we prefer biconjugate stamp over GMS. And for anything else that's large scale, we use GMS. And you can set the preconditioner, which in this case I have the default preconditioner. So this gets to the main loop here. So this is where I'm uh, uh, automatically rerunning my simulation and generating the large data set, the large parametric data set that I wanted. So here I'm looping over my parameters A and B. In this line, I'm updating K. So here I define K in this part of the code, which has input parameters A and B. And I update the input parameters K, A and B. So you can see I use K dot A being updated by a certain value and K dot B being updated by a certain value. And then my weak form, which contains K in it, the permeability also automatically gets updated. And then I call the solver. And once I do, I'll get the solution. I split it into the two components, a U and P. And I can also define some names for them and then save the file. Okay, So in this case, I ran this code using a, a certain number of processors. So this code, the high-performance computing was used in running this simulation because we need to uh, you know, run for several cases in this case. And if you run this code, uh, this is the results that you get. So first, take a let's take a look at the permeability. So I'm loading the results into Pairview. So you can see that I have 225, so going from zero index to 224. These are all the data that I generated, and I can play it in Pairview or go to states and time steps. So these are the permeability field that I generate, and then corresponding to each value, I have a velocity field. So I can also play if I rescale this. So this is the velocity magnitude. Uh, I'm showing the velocity magnitude, so you can see the velocity magnitude that uh, I get from these uh, simulations. So this is great. We have, you know, easily taken a certain problem, uh, a weak form for Darcy's equation in this case, and very simply, we wrapped it around a for loop. We parameterized the problem. We defined the sets of parameters we were interested in, in this case, A and B, the certain range in values. And by updating them, we update the weak form, run the solver again, save the data for every iteration. And now we have a large data set that's automatically created. And specifically, I use this data set that I'm showing here for one of my machine learning studies. Uh, thank you.